at 40,000 Verizon workers left work Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. and went on strike. We say back and we say now you can see behind me, I'm at one of the rallies, which is in Newark, where union workers have gathered, and there's hundreds of them, Bill. Now, this is a massive strike. It spans east, the East Coast. Now, this has been a possibility since contract negotiations failed last year. August. So I spoke with Robert Spear. He's a union worker from Local 827 who told me this. Why the strike? Because the uh, parties couldn't come to an agreement and the company told us that this is it. If you don't like it, hit the streets. I asked him what the specific problem with the contracts were. The company that made $39 billion in profit is now saying they are not willing to share that profit with the employees that built this corporation. Now, the major sticking points between the company and the workers is health care, pensions, as well as the call centers, which means that jobs might be going overseas, and they're completely against this. We just want a fair contract. We're just trying to get our fair share and keep our benefits and not have them send our jobs overseas. Now, Verizon says that they have been getting ready for this. They've trained 10,000 workers to take the place of the nearly 40,000 workers that have gone on strike. Uh, but... The union workers, they say that this will affect customer service. Just to be clear for our viewers, this strike affects landlines and cable. This does not affect wireless customers. So your cell phone's fine. Yeah, this is definitely the landline, the Verizon Fios, those issues. Well, yeah, Verizon Fios doesn't reach half the homes anyway. I well, mean, so it's like no one has it. It does. It, it, supposedly it's a decent product. Right now, I'm glad I don't have it. I actually used to work for them, too. I worked for Fios did One you? News as a reporter there. I, I'm not going to go into details, but they did not pay well. If what I made is any indicator of what these people are making. Last year, they posted $8.9 billion in profits. But what they're doing is they're offshoring a lot of the employee work overseas. So they saved $300 million in employee costs last year, but what about the Americans who are actually working for them? They're living under constant threat that they could lose their job you know, at any minute. Sabeel, I think that's more of a political problem than it is for the company. I think this is what's driving a lot of Trump numbers. I mean, he's saying that our jobs are going overseas and they are going overseas, but honestly, these guys that work in the landline business, I think they ought to rethink their career path to begin with. One of the things that I asked Robert was, they train these non-union workers to take their place. Is he afraid that these non-union workers will stay and keep those jobs? And he says that he thinks that the customer service that the union workers provide is uh, unparalleled. So he doesn't think that's a threat, but... He's really afraid of the customer service getting better during the strike. That's going to be the real problem.